the movie. You're about to see a research study of one of modern industry's most widely used transportation systems, conveyors. A high efficiency, high speed, high volume concept that moves millions upon millions of tons of bulk materials every day, everywhere in the world. Without this dependable and economical innovation, our industrial complex would soon grind to a halt. Perhaps the only other transport concept that is equal in utilization are roadways. Those intricate patterns of concrete that bisect our cities and span our landscapes. Roadways and conveyors have much in common. Both are designed to operate smoothly and effortlessly, handling a large volume of predetermined cargo or traffic. All works well when operating conditions are well within design limits. But when unforeseen events occur, anything can happen. In the everyday movement of massive amounts of bulk materials, nothing can match the efficiency of high-speed conveyor systems. What makes them so efficient are innovative designs, incorporating ever wider belts, running over longer and longer distances at faster and faster speeds. This in turn has made higher tonnages routine. But as designers improved conveyor efficiency over the years, something happened. Industry's most widely used transportation system began to create great amounts of obnoxious dirt. nauseating material, polluting plants, and the surrounding environment. Shortening the operating life of expensive equipment and frequently creating hazardous working conditions. And strange as it may seem, from the beginning, all this depressing dirt seemed to be accepted as just another trade-off for progress. But to some, this dirt is not inevitable. The U.S. Bureau of Mines and the British Mechanical Handling Engineers Association and several leading private corporations firmly believe that industry does not have to be burdened with this costly and hazardous menace. To follow their reasoning, let's start at the beginning. You've heard of the vicious cycle? Well, conveyors have one too. The vicious cycle starts when owners and designers, in good faith, try to reduce construction costs. Too frequently, where conveyors are concerned, attempts at savings are made in the specification of vital equipment to control dirt. But this initial part of the vicious cycle is often unquestioned, because many believe that dirt is something we must live with, and equipment of any kind won't help. But there's a huge price to pay for this kind of thinking. To better grasp this, let's take a look at a new conveyor system under construction. Here are miles of elaborate fabrications with expensive hardware using thousands and thousands of bearings, all with an operating light based on a normal industrial atmosphere. However, unanticipated dirt could easily upset the operating life and production efficiency established for the system. In a matter of months, this costly investment could be transformed into a major production bottleneck. 
literally buried under unnecessary dirt. Dangerous dirt, causing a chain reaction of expensive operating problems, like belt damage, mistracking, excessive idler wear, tons of dirty deposits on equipment and structures, creating a serious safety problem, unscheduled production shutdowns, accidents, even fires. And all of these problems can be traced directly back to the unnecessary dirt, the vicious cycle at work. But supposedly dirt escaping from conveyors is something that we have to live with. It's part of the natural order of things. Now, new research reveals that nothing could be further from the truth. Conveyors can run clean, and they should run clean. And there are many excellent examples of clean conveyors. The result of owners, designers, equipment manufacturers, and operators working together to control the vicious cycle. But what makes one conveyor run clean and another dirty? Are there different priorities designers must follow to develop a clean conveyor? Must energy efficiency be compromised to keep a conveyor running clean? Researchers looking for answers started with the root of the problem, the dirt itself, or what is technically known as fugitive material. This encompasses any dust or dirt that escapes from a conveyor by spillage, leakage, or as carryback on the belt itself. And to further complicate the matter, dirt is very changeable. In some instances, it can be very fine and dry. But dirt can also be very wet, thick, and sticky. No matter what its form, wet or dry, dirt is a costly and dangerous menace. To better understand how it evolves, let's look at this simplified drawing of a typical conveyor. Whether it's a hundred feet or a mile long, there's a loading point and a discharge point. A drive section is usually located at the head pulley. A gravity take-up keeps proper tension on the belt. Often there's a cover to protect the cargo from the elements and a housing to confine the material at each transfer point. All conveyors have but one purpose, to move large amounts of cargo quickly and efficiently. If operating conditions are normal, the cargo flows without interruption and relatively dirt-free. But when conditions are not normal, if the rapidly moving belt does not track true, if it snakes from one side to the other, great amounts of fugitive material will spill from the conveyor. But there's a very dangerous aspect to mistracking the ever-present possibility of a belt wreck, destroying an expensive belt, but even worse, endangering the lives of operating personnel. To prevent this terrible situation, safety switches are strategically located to shut the system down. And when busy conveyors stop, costs soar immediately. Research finding. For safety and dirt control, conveyor belts must track true. But there's a catch. Designers can readily consult many sources to aid in the specification of hardware that will make a belt start tracking properly. However, there's almost a vacuum of information on the actual field conditions that will physically alter the hardware they select, changing dimensions and conditions that will severely affect belt tracking. Another point. There's far too little information on fugitive material itself. How it escapes from the conveyor. How this monster is virtually impossible to control once free. How carryback will build up on vital hardware. The monster dirt severely affects belt tracking. To better understand the deplorable conditions dirt creates, let's review the steps required to align a conveyor belt. First, the head pulley is exactly aligned with the tail pulley. Next, the snub pulley is aligned. Then, work proceeds on the return side of the belt, with adjustments made to the return idlers, the bend pulleys, and finally, the carrying idlers. 
The exact alignment of the underside hardware is most critical for inline belt travel. And all of the adjustments needed to realign a belt are usually small, movements of a fraction of an inch. In other words, even a slight repositioning of hardware directly affects a belt's tracking. How then can a running belt be kept in alignment if the hardware controlling its tracking keeps changing in dimension? Changed by a buildup of carryback dirt. Research finding. Carryback dirt must be eliminated for a belt to track properly. But there's another catch. The carryback dirt itself physically changes, often becoming sticky, clinging to the belt easily transported upside down, easily deposited on idlers, hardening in place, altering the dimensions of these vital components and severely affecting the belt's travel. Research finding. Carryback must be removed before it builds up on vital components. But there's another catch. To get this very difficult job done requires a systems approach. Basic to the effectiveness of any system is the proper analysis of the nature of the carryback itself and a complete understanding of the most adverse conditions the belt will encounter, even if these conditions occur only a few times a year. Research finding. Designed for the most adverse operating conditions, not what's considered normal. This research finding is perhaps one of the most important to dirt control. When unanticipated carryback overpowers the cleaning equipment, the conveyor immediately becomes inefficient and a dangerous dirt producer. Then, costly man hours must be devoted to cleaning up the unsightly and hazardous mess around work areas. And every hour a dirty conveyor runs, the operating life of expensive components are shortened as dirt erodes their vital parts. When dirt takes control, the problems go on and on and on. As we mentioned before, the control of dirt requires a systems approach, starting with the premise that one cleaner can't be expected to remove all of the carryback on conveyor belts. A systems approach uses a series of cleaners, individually designed for specific functions, a doctor blade cleaner removes a good share of the carryback as far forward on the head pulley as possible. Putting the removed dirt back into the main material flow, avoiding a buildup on the dribble chute. The dribble chute must be carefully angled to avoid encapsulating the secondary cleaners in carryback. Besides removing the majority of the carryback, the doctor blade also prevents the overloading of the secondary cleaners. Units designed to effectively remove the thin slime-like fines that stick to the underside of the belt. Research finding. Conveyors must be designed with multiple cleaners. But there's another catch. Too often, multiple cleaners seem to be a design afterthought, sometimes literally squeezed into the construction. Cleaners located in hard-to-reach, out-of-the-way places and jammed up against structural steel are difficult and often impossible to service properly. And without essential maintenance, the best of cleaners soon become useless. Too often, head frame designs make cleaner service virtually impossible. Without increasing construction costs, conveyors can be easily designed to permit proper cleaner maintenance. This can be accomplished with a horizontal support or a vertical bearing support. Either design will provide adequate installation space for multiple cleaners and room for maintenance people to service equipment to keep it functioning efficiently. The best of equipment needs routine maintenance and cleaners are no different. With easily accessible locations, maintenance people can systematically service cleaners on a fixed schedule. Research finding. Planned service of cleaning systems is essential to keep conveyors running clean. But there's another catch. 
Downtime on busy belts is extremely costly. Therefore, the cleaning systems to be cost effective must be flexible in design with features that allow for fast maintenance and service on a moment's notice, even under conditions where the belt must be kept in operation during the procedure. Now let's examine the other end of the conveyor, the loading point. Dirt escaping here can also be traced to sincere attempts to keep construction costs down. Such things as loading too close to the tail pulley, hoping to shorten conveyor lengths and satisfy space restrictions. Too few idlers in the loading area. A minimal length of skirting. All of these things may keep costs down in construction, but usually result in great quantities of dangerous dirt. Research finding. Designing for dirt control is essential in loading areas. But there's another catch. Material passing through a loading area changes in character. Falling onto the belt, it is turbulent and becomes aerated, consequently occupying more space. In the first few feet of travel, the cargo is often piled twice as high as normal above the belt and will create excessive pressure against the rubber seal, often forcing material to leak out. Therefore, the type of rubber seal and its position in relationship to the wear liner will determine how effectively leakage will be controlled. With this information, certain factors must be considered in designing dust and dirt-free loading points, such as wear liners positioned close to the belt, adequate space between tail pulley and the loading hopper, idlers closely spaced to maintain a flat belt profile, with rollers that can be easily serviced or replaced. Rubber skirting of sufficient length for the belt and easily adjustable to compensate for wear. Dust pickups and access doors for easy interior service. However, the most important aspect for the control of dirt at loading points is often overlooked. The loading itself must be in the center of the belt because off-center loading causes serious belt misalignment. But center loading is difficult and sometimes even impossible because of the changing trajectories of the cargo as it's loaded. Research finding. The belt can be contoured to compensate for off-center loading. As the off-center cargo leaves the loading zone, the belt is formed into a U-shape. Ribbed rollers add mechanical shaking. This combination forces the cargo back to the center of the belt, sending it on its way in the proper position. Research summary. Today's technology is capable of controlling dirt in conveyor systems. The vicious cycle of dirt producing conveyors can be broken. The dangerous menace of fugitive materials need not continue unabated. Owners, designers, hardware manufacturers, and operators working together can eliminate the high cost of dirt. Dirt can be controlled. Thinking clean is the first step.